Hey you Stygian dogs. Issue number three of Heroic Signatures and Titan Comics Conan the Barbarian hits the shelves next Wednesday, September 27th. And well, I'll share my usual in-depth look later in the day on the 27th, a flip through, some commentary, a review of the covers, my summary thoughts. I've just finished reading number three and wanted to present an entirely spoiler-free look at the issue in advance of its release. Now, in a message to me prior to the release of the last issue, Jim Zub had said that issue number two and three is where things really go full steam. And you'll know by now that I'm rather spitting with number two. I really do feel that it was that good. Beyond going gaga over Roberto De La Torre's art, as was the case with issue zero and issue one, number two is where Jim Zub's superlative writing really comes to the fore. It's where he really owns things. The character building, the painting of the supernatural and the macabre, uh, the creation of tension, the teasing, the overall prose. It's something else. I'll say this about issue number three. He doesn't let up the momentum. Zub continues to drive things forward, answering some questions, raising even more as he goes along. I'm kind of nervous to find out how he pulls everything together in the final issue of the arc. So let's take a look at issue number two in quick summary. Conan and Brissa, having followed the seemingly ensorcelled savages into Samaria, bearing witness to a baneful light, the maddening shrieks of the lost tribe bringing thunderous response, Dolatore's mind-blowing two-page spread, a terrible vision of sacrifices. Though horror is like an hallucination, a cacophony of moments past and moments yet to be. It's so damned good. When the bedevilment ends, Conan and Bressa contend with Conan's lost kin, with whom they engage in battle. Moving on through the mists, they confront a spire of black stone that shimmers with unholy power. And of course, we know that Conan and Brissa are going to enter the Ebon Tower. And it's from here that the story continues. If you checked out the article from Majorspoilers.com, Titan Comics and Heroic Signatures gave us a sneak preview of issue number three, sharing the first four pages. What we do know is that the pair enter the tower, weapons at the ready. Maddeningly twisted caverns and azure-tinged illumination defy the darkness. Encountering robed figures they silently follow, and through a doorway discover Conan's encaged kin. Having now read the full issue, it's fair to say that this is the most they could share without ruining the plot and subsequent action. The pages do set the initial tone of the environment and things escalate from there. To me, the first two issues give us subtle differences in flavor as the settings change and motivations settle in, the heightening action and deepening mystery serving as the through line. And issue number three is no different in this regard a marked and grim change of setting. And while we're given answers to some of the mystery, we find ourselves in greater depths and the action does not abate. Dilatory giving us panel after panel of frenzied battle and another wonderful two page spread that really clarifies the stakes. Conan's ferocity is well on display here as is his demonstrable loyalty to his Sumerian countrymen. Brissa continues to be a formidable presence and she's an ally to Conan, serving to not simply stand in his shadow, but give him to shine as a heroine in her own right. And while issues one and two ended with intrigue that pulled us onward, eager to know more, this one, well, it's a cliffhanger with Dilatori's final page giving us an ethereal eeriness and a beautiful iridescence that's created by Dean White's colors. And the whole issue is Jim Zub again just claiming victory in the name of an absolutely astounding creative team. Jim Zub, as you'll know, is a Conan fan himself, and the excitement around the series and the excitement of interacting with fans must be thrilling. And when you're the writer and the keeper of the story, privy to all and sworn to secrecy, how could you not be giddy? with tip of the tongue anticipation, eager to share what you know. When Zub and I spoke at Fan Expo Canada, I felt that he hinted that number three might bring us full on sword and sorcery as the source of the evil emanation is revealed. I could be misremembering, but there is a sense that he had to restrain himself in speaking of the reveal. In my review of issue number two, I suggested that if not full on sword and sorcery, at a minimum, we'd get a satisfying reveal. Well, I'll say this, it's undoubtedly satisfying. I suspect that Robert E. Howard fans will not be disappointed. The mystery of Briss's lineage and Jeffrey Shanks's clarity on these matters is not for naught. On my part, Zub's intimations were not imagined. Groundwork laid, stories yet to be told. I think things just got expansive. Heroic Signatures is not messing around. Um, my gut tells me that they're playing a long game here and they have a lot in store for us with these properties. 
Fred Malmberg had responded to a post of mine that he thought that issue number three may be a little bit better than number two. And I dare say that he may be correct. But honestly, I'll not be satisfied nor make a pronouncement of any kind until I get my hands on issue number four. If you're like me, you'll read this with a grin and you're going to be disappointed when it ends. And you'll be eager to wait for the next month. And in the end, you're going to be excited that Conan the Barbarian from Heroic Signatures and Titan Comics continues to live up to the loftiest of expectations. They did it again. As mentioned, I'll share my usual in-depth spoiler-laden look later in the day on the 27th. Remember, September 26th sees the release of Stephen Graham Jones's Conan Lord of the Mountain novella. Check that out. And until then, take it easy, you stitching dogs.